Hello everyone. Welcome to this video lesson. In this video lesson, we are going to solve a problem and of course explain a concept called principle of homogeneity. First of all, let us have a look at the problem. The problem says like this. If velocity of the sound depends on two factors. One is modulus of velocity of that medium and the density of that medium. Derive the expression for velocity of sound. That's the problem. Let me repeat. If velocity of the sound depends on modulus of elasticity of the medium and the density of the medium, derive the expression for the velocity of the medium. That's the problem. Let's try to explain the concept and solve that problem. It is first of all given in the problem that velocity of a sound, I am showing it with a letter V, depends on modulus of elasticity. I am showing modulus of velocity with a term E. Depends on by how much power, we don't know. It could be plus or minus, whatever it may be, fractional value. It is also depending on, as per the problem, density of the medium. Let us say I am representing the density of the medium with the rho power of y. Then, what is the value of velocity of sound in that terms of E and rho is your question. First of all, what I have written is something like called something like an equation. I am just saying that velocity of sound, we have written an equation. Velocity depends on modulus of velocity power of x and the density power of y. This equation has to be dimensionally correct if it has to be correct in terms of physics. A dimensionally correct equation shall have dimensions of LHS side in terms of fundamental quantities like length, mass and time shall be the dimensions of RHS side. That is called something like principle of homogeneity. According to principle of homogeneity, if we have written an equation, the fundamental dimensions that is powers of the fundamental quantities like length, mass and time shall be the same both on LHS and RHS side. That is what you call principle of homogeneity. Using on that principle, I would like to solve this problem. Let us try to write dimensions of these physical quantities. One is velocity. We know velocity is defined as rate of change of displacement. Displacement is L by time that is Lt power minus 1. Of course, there is no m power. I can write simply m power 0, L power 1, t power minus 1 directly proportional to Modulus of elasticity. E is called modulus of elasticity. You know, as per the mechanical properties of uh, material, modulus of elasticity could be written like uh, stress by strain. Stress is defined as force per unit area. Change is defined as, strain is defined as, change in the dimensions of a body, its original by its original dimensions. Force has a dimension formula of mass into acceleration, mass m, acceleration is lt power minus 2. Area is having a dimensions of square of length, change in the length has a dimensions of l and the length is also having a dimensions of l. Thus it is very clear that strain has no dimensions and modulus of velocity has a dimensions that is equal to stress itself. So by simplifying that ml t power minus 2 by l square because the denominator terms are same they can be cancelled. So the dimensions of modulus of elasticity is m l power plus 1 and minus 2 l power minus 1 and t power minus 2. This is the dimensions of uh, modulus of elasticity. I can substitute this value here e here in the place of this e I can write dimensions as mass power 1, L power minus 1, T power minus 2, whole power of some unknown value x. And we also need to write the dimensions of density. We know density is generally defined like mass by volume. Mass is the fundamental quantity represented with m volume of any body will be having cube dimensions of length. So, dimensional formula of density is 
m l power minus 3. So, I can substitute that value also here in this equation density as m l power minus 3 whole power of y. So, we got an equation this is the equation that is the equation simply I have written basing on the relation that is given in the problem. As of now, I have just taken the data and written the dimensional formulas of all the physical quantities that are available in the problem. As per the principle of homogeneity, the dimensions that is the power of the fundamental quantities for each fundamental quantity on the LHS side shall be equal to that of right hand side. Let us simplify this equation further. So, simplifying equation number 1 gives on the left hand side m power 0 l power 1 t power minus 1. I am just uh, writing a proportionality or even I can write a constant. I can write here you can see an m power x is there. Here some m power y is there. So, by writing the m powers together I can write a formula m power of x plus y. Here we can see l power of minus 1 into x minus x is there. Here l power of minus 3 into y minus 3 y is there. Therefore, I can write l power of minus x and minus 3 y. And look at the time powers. Here time power of minus 2 into x minus 2 x. Here there is no time power. So, I can write time power of minus 2 x. So, as for the principle of homogeneity, the dimensions has to be equal of the mass, length and time on both left hand side and right hand side. So, by equating the dimensions, where dimension is the power of a physical fundamental quantity, by equating dimensions of mass first here mass has a dimension of 0, it has a dimension of x plus y, I can write x plus y equal to 0. That implies x is nothing but equal to minus y. Now, by equating the dimensions of by equating the dimensions of length let us find out the dimensions of length. Here L has a dimension of 1. Here L has a dimension of minus 3 and minus x y. I can write minus x and minus 3 y is equal to 1. And let us also equate the dimensions of time. Here minus 1. Here minus 2 x. That implies I can write minus 2 x equal to minus 1. That implies x is nothing but equal to half. Let us substitute the value of x equal to half in any of the equations say from this equation. I can write x plus y equal to 0, half plus y equal to 0. That implies y is nothing but equal to minus half. So, we have already got the values of x and y. So, the value of the x is equal to half, value of y equal to minus half. To cross check what we have done is correct or not, we can substitute this values in equation number 3 and we can check whether that is actually satisfying or not. Let us substitute the values. We have got x value as plus half that implies from equation number 3 x value is plus half minus x now therefore minus half minus 3 into y value is minus half. So, the value is minus half minus half minus plus 3 by 2. So, its value is 1 itself. Even equation number 3 is also saying the same. So, this confirms that whatever we have got is right perfectly all right. So, our uh, equation says that by substituting, we can substitute these values of x as well as y 
x you have got some value, y you have got some value, you can substitute them back in equation number 1 to get the relation. So, what I can write? Let us say from equation number 1, velocity is directly proportional to modulus of velocity power of x, but we have got x as half and density power y, we got the y value as minus half, that is what the relation is that implies velocity is directly proportional to square root of e by rho. Of course, what is the value of the proportionality constant, we cannot determine using the dimensional analysis, we need to learn the basic subject itself. So, I can simply say directly proportional to some constant into e by rho, but k value Okay, I have substituted, I kept a constant now, I can eliminate the proportionality and put equal to. We can not calculate, we cannot measure k value using dimensional analysis. That is another way the limitation of the dimensional analysis. We cannot find out the proportionality constant values, we need to learn the actual subject itself. That way, by solving this problem, we have learned the concept of principle of homogeneity that the powers of the fundamental quantities in any right physics equation on both left hand side and right hand side has to be same. And we have also learned one limitation that we cannot find the value of a proportionality constraints using dimensional analysis. Thank you. Subscribe to this YouTube channel and come back for the more and more information. Thank you.